Well, nobody likes bugs on their plants, but what if you had a plant that eats bugs? I'm with Mike out here at Little Prince, and we got some cool plants to show you today. Yeah, they're great. The carnivorous plants, one of my favorite types of plant personally, so I grow a lot of them at my house. And you know, what exactly is a carnivorous plant? Uh, it's just a plant that has evolved to eat insects to gain its nutrients instead of taking nutrients from the soil. So photosynthesizes just like a normal plant, has roots, takes water up like a normal plant, but is native to areas that have really poor soils and nutrient deficient yes. soils, so it has evolved to eat insects as a way to uh, gain nutrients. Because it looks like you know each one eats it a little differently, right? It looks like some go in a big, a big throat, and others might be close up on them. So what are some of the yeah. differences? Yeah. So the Saracenias, the pitcher plants, these are the hardy ones. They have little tiny hairs that all point down inside it, and the insect is attracted to the inside of the pitcher and it falls in and there's water that collects at the bottom of that pitcher and then because the hairs all point down they can't climb their way back out of it and so and the venus fly traps have little tiny hairs on their pads and when two of those hairs are triggered at the exact same time the trap will close very rapidly and catch the insect inside of it now do you want to go in and try to you know Everybody thinks that's pretty cool. Do you want to go mm -hmm. in and try to feed, feed your own fly traps or play around with them? Uh, if you have a, a fly that, or an insect or something that's not quite dead and you want to throw it in there and it can move around just enough to get that fly trap to close, that would be fine. But contrary to popular belief, you don't want to feed a hamburger <laughs> and uh, no ham either, no meat products of any kind. <laughs> They're strictly insect diets. Um, and you don't, they're super cool just to hit them and to trigger them for fun, but they have a limited number of times those traps can actually close before they die off. So and you can actually damage the plant by kind yes, of playing around with it too yes, much. Yes. Now there's, you know, a couple different kinds over here that look, you know, what are these ones over here? You got fuzzy ones and different kinds of... Yeah, well we have a couple other, um, uh, Pitcher plants, the Nepenthes, they're tropical pitcher plants. So their pitchers are slightly different. You can see they kind of hang. So it's really a good plant for uh, a hanging basket or something okay. like that. But they are tropical in nature and not hardy to our area. And they would need to be inside during the winter months. So those you'd want to put in like a decorative pot or a container yeah. like this where you could have it inside. Yeah. Now, now the other ones that are hardy, what kind of soil do we need to use with those if we're going to have them? Do they go in the ground or best in a pot? Or Right, so our soils are too good here in Oregon for them, so never plant them in the ground. Uh, an ideal potting mix for carnivorous plants is a 50% peat, 50% perlite mix. Okay. Um, and never fertilize them at all. The fertilizer will kill them. And your water is one of the most important things about it. You need a very low mineral count, low salt water. So if you're in the Portland area, I live in Westland and our tap water is okay for them because it's very pure water. If you're on a well or you're not certain of your water, buy distilled water or okay. collect rainwater. Okay. So yeah, that's and you want them constantly moist all the time. Never let them dry out at all. Is that and then as far as care in the winter, they can be, you know, the hardy ones can be left out. Do they need to go, you know, dormant or should we bring them in or what's the best? Yeah, no, is? they they need to be, they need their dormant period. That's yeah. why these don't make good house plants at all. So they need to go through a dormant period in the winter. And what I do with my containers at home is I just put some, some leaves over the top of it. And I've had mine for six years plus. Oh, so fun. they've gone through some pretty, pretty cold winters. Right, so it looks like you can get, you know, lots of different, you know, the, the coloring and the textures, there's so many different varieties. I'm assuming, you know, with the hardy ones, you can have a mixed mix container with lots of different ones going on yeah. at the same time. Yeah, exactly. As they, you can mix all of them together, so not so a problem look, at all. So it sounds like, you know, there's lot, lots of fun things, you know, if you want to have a plant that's actually going to eat, eat the bugs and it's kind of a fun experiment for kids, you know, yeah. you can have some for outside or you can have some, some for inside, you know, in a, a wide range, but, you know, make sure you're you know, you're following directions or the information as far as having, you know, the, the right soil, you know, not 
feeding them something they're not supposed to be eating right. and definitely don't don't fertilize them so no nope. and keep the water the water is probably your most crucial aspect of it right after the soil okay. so. you know so if, you know for more information on these cool carnivorous plants you know you can go to little prince plants online or you can go to gardentime.tv and get all sorts of information or we can click you over to little prince's page so you'll know, go out and find a great plant you can find these out at your independent garden center thanks for having us mike thanks for coming out Thank you.